गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन जी नमस्ते नमस्कार जय राम कृष्ण वेलकम टू द नाइनटीन लेक्चर ऑफ द गुरुमंथन सीरीज as you are aware guru mantan is being hosted by the vivekananda institute for leadership development village mission is to develop human and social capital for nation building uh, and enhancing the potential of individuals and institutions across the development sector uh, we work with uh, four sectors uh, the government ngos corporates and the and the community this particular lecture series is aimed at uh, creating a platform for teachers to discuss uh, share debate and learn about diverse uh, perspectives and practices in the field of education this is aimed to be a, a lecture a series of 50 lectures and uh, over the last 4 uh, months starting from 1st august we have had uh, dr gurraj karjiki professor mk shridhar uh, mr anurag behar then we had uh, dr kasturi rangan address all our teachers on the teachers day uh, and then uh, our former mhrd secretary mr anil swarup uh, professor anamalai and dr rs pravin kumar address all of us in october november we had another uh, very successful month and thought provoking month with uh, mr hl satish addressing uh, teachers on on the eve of children's day and we are now into the fifth month of guru mantra this month uh, we have uh, swami ji starting of the lecture series and then later this month we will have uh, mr sahil uh, talk about starting an impact uh, university then mr prashant talking about technology and teachers and then uh, lecture ending with uh, professor uh, giridhar talking about how do we define uh, learning outcomes so in the session today we have uh, swami mahipalananda ji from the ramkrishna vidyashala uh, talking about universal uh, values for today's youth and a better tomorrow uh, as you might be aware uh, swami ji uh, joined the monastic order from the belgavi center he is a trained uh, uh, architect Uh, practiced uh, architecture professionally before uh, moving into the uh, ramkrishna order after uh, and his expertise lies in the field of uh, spiritual counseling human resource management and uh, uh, focusing on the science of personality and skill develop uh, skill building for the youth uh, swami ji as always uh, we would be having uh, a 25 to 30 minute lecture followed by a q and a session which the audience will be posting their questions in the chat box dr kumar and myself will be q, uh, moderating the q and a session welcome to the session and uh, over to you swamiji namaskar thank you very much ओम स्थापकाय धर्म सेवधर्म स्वरूपिणी अवतार वरिष्ठाय रामकृष्णा थे नम ओम असतो मा सत्कमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतम कमय ओम शांत 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 एट द वेरी आउटसेट आई लाइक टू कंग्रेचुलेट डॉक्टर बालसुब्रमण्यम एंड हिस डायनेमिक टीम एट एस वी वाई एम एंड बी लीड फॉर दिस ब्रिलियंट इनिशिएटिव to broadcast the ideas and visions of swami vekananda while acknowledging your invite i am honored to be part of this program thank you very much i'll move on to my presentation so as we i hope the screen is visible to all of you yes sir universal values swami ji you have to share your screen the bottom you'll see share screen something 
इट विजिबल समझे या यस यूनिवर्सल वैल्यूज अंडरस्टैंडिंग लीडरशिप फॉर टूडेज यूथ फॉर अ बेटर टूमोरो to bring in universal values how leadership can be a vehicle to deliver this values is what i would like to share with you all of you today integrating perspectives on leadership education and spirituality to recall one of swami vivekananda's wonderful exhortations every step i take in the light is mine forever swami ji talks about that insight which is gained from purposeful experience and that gives us a direction and a purpose to train and lead our lives in the life and teachings of swami vivekananda how can youth of today apply the insights of leadership educational principles and spiritual living to foster a way the path of enlightened citizenship we all know what the citizenship is our purpose today here is to understand gain some insights so that we can move towards a path of enlightened citizenship swami ji reiterated the need to translate this vision into action to the instrumentality of the heart head and hand these are all symbols symbols which represents a deeper concept a heart to empathize a head to analyze comprehend and a hand to execute we are looking at a sacra secular model an integrator of traditional and contemporary concepts as envisioned and brought into practice by none other than swami vivekananda his legacy of the ramakrishna martin mission which incorporates this ideal with its proven track record of more than a century how can one initiate bring in this new initiatives in social justice empowering through values leadership skills service being a key spiritual quotient so that the needs of the society are being renewed and served why is spiritual quotient or spiritual values important in today's age swami vivekananda rightly pointed out over a century ago he said that if the spiritual forces are properly addressed to then the society will adjust itself accordingly the healthy social changes are but the manifestations of the spiritual forces working within and initiatives like these ngos like these corporates like these will be able to bring about a transformation in the social structure that society is the greatest where the highest truths become practical and if society is not fit for the highest truths make it so sooner the better stand up men and women in the spirit dare to believe in the truth dare to practice the truth strong words from swami vivekananda a overview of the ramakrishna martin mission shri ramakrishna the great master and this pioneering band of 16 monastic disciples 
Atmano Mokshartam, Jagad Hitaycha. For one's own salvation and for the welfare of the world. In order to facilitate this epoch making vision, Swami Vivekananda founded the Ramakrishna Matan Mission in 1887, May 1st. And enshrined within this charter were the first principles of the integration between the sacred and the secular. That democratic principles were inbuilt into that ecosystem of the Ramakrishna Matan Mission. The Belur Mat, the epicenter of the Ramakrishna movement. Some excerpts from the mission statement. How we need to strive for the temporal, mental and spiritual advancement of human races, humanity. And how one may train men to be competent teachers of such knowledge or sciences so that it can be conducive to the material and spiritual welfare of the masses. There is a particular concept called a hilltop position, you know, hilltop positioning where you elevate yourself at a particular level, try to distance yourself from a particular problem and so that to gain a clearer perspective. This hilltop positioning helps our mind in gathering a truer perspective, a more mature sense of proportion and a wider vision. Then descending on the empirical realm, empirical terrain, and negotiate ground level problems with greater sagacity and a sense of priority followed by genuine effectiveness. So this secular is better manageable in the clear light of the sacred. I present before you the aspects of our emblem of the Ramakrishna Martin mission. These aspects denote something much more fundamental. The wavy waters representing the karma, the work, the selfless work. The beautiful lotus representing devotion, bhakti. The rising sun depicting the ascent of jnana, wisdom, discrimination, and the serpent encircling denoting the power of yoga. This combined together, this holistic all brings about, should bring about a transformative influence on the people and the society at large. Some perspectives on leadership where the element of darkness, ignorance, how this needs to be handled or approached. Swami Vivekananda points out, he says, all the powers in the universe are already ours. It is we who have put our hands before our eyes and cry that it is dark. Who will give the world the light? Sacrifice in the past has been the law. It will, alas, for ages to come. The earth's bravest and the best will have to sacrifice themselves for the good of the many and for the welfare of all. So I'd like to share with all of you some core leadership principles of Swami Vivekananda. Because to drive home the universal values, to empower the youth, we need to understand from where the vehicle needs to deliver to understand. That is where leadership comes into perspective. Integration of Duradrishti, farsightedness and Antaradrishti, insightedness. With, to make it successful, to make it happen, we need to supplement it with substantial amounts of obedience, passion, determination, and perseverance. I introduce before you two concepts. One is the servant leadership, where a servant leader is the one who wants to serve first. This conscious choice brings one to aspire to lead this is more about the character than style, with emphasis on collaboration and ethical use of power. This is one of the templates how a leader can function. Second is the Pygmalion effect. 
the leader constantly aims at moving people around him from states of dependence to interdependence, where independence is one important aspect where a person is able to stand on his own feet. And after that, beyond standing on one's feet of how he'll, he'll be able to reciprocate the social structure, the society as a whole. Swami Vivekananda had chosen this empowering and facilitating philosophy over command and control. If you develop yourself, you can experience personal success. If you develop a team, your organization can experience growth. If you develop leaders, your organization can achieve explosive growth. We are here to groom leaders for our nation, for our society. So we know what we need to do. So how do we do it? How do we approach the idea of leadership? Servant leadership. True leaders have a servant's heart. Swami Vivekananda's concept of a leader in the late 19th century echoes in the seminal work of the book by Robert Greenleaf in 1970, Servant Leadership. How we can take up the role of a leader steward, holding something in trust for another, of how one can be compelled, you know, compelled or get that insight to serve a purpose larger than himself, selflessness, redefining selflessness. Some characters or characteristics of a servant leader. So we have this Venn diagram here. Servant leader. Servants attributes of listening, empathy, healing. And as a leader, how a person needs to be aware, persuasive, how he can conceptualize abstract ideas and foresight. This integration leads on to stewardship, commitment to people in the society, which leads on to building a very effective and efficient community. Swami Vivekananda's approach, a very unique approach to work and leadership principles could be understood by some of his writings, Swami Vivekananda's letters to his uh, disciples, to his admirers, friends, the letters of Swami Vivekananda. From that, I take a few excerpts and I place before you. One written to Alasinga Perumal in 1894 when Swamiji was in the United States. Do not try to lead your brethren, but serve them. The brutal mania for leading has sunk many a great ship in the waters of life. Now organize a little society. You will have to take charge of the whole movement, not as a leader, but as a servant. Another letter written to one of his brother disciples, Swami Ramakrishnananda. Swami Ramakrishnananda was a pioneer in instituting the Ramakrishna Martin missions in Madras, Chennai, Bangalore, Bangalore, Bengaluru, and Mysore. A great Swamiji. To him, Swamiji writes, he says, it is a very difficult task to take on the role of a leader one must be dasasya dasa, a servant of servants, and must accommodate a thousand minds. There must be no shade of jealousy or selfishness. And then only you are a leader. You, are, you can become eligible to be a leader. Difficult ideas, but doable indeed. Now we shall deliberate a little bit on this Pygmalion effect. That phenomena where others' expectation of a person affect that person's performance. How this self-fulfilling prophecy works starts from our image, which impacts people's perception about us. And that once again influences 
self improvement and this self improvement changes people's impression about you and that in turn improves your image this cycle this chain is something which we need to understand the effect of enabling subordinates to excel in response to leaders expectation of them as a team manager team leader project managers ceo we expect a particular standard in our corporate and our social ecosystem structure if we are able to make our subordinates our juniors our team to respond to that quality then we have achieved a considerable lot the cycle of belief potential action and results that belief amount of belief which determines the potential that one can tap into that amount of potential which you tap determines the amount of action you take and that action determines the results which we get and flows on to that results which determine the belief in yourself this is a important concept if incorporated into our lives will lead great results the goal of many leaders is to get people to think more highly of the leader the goal of a great leader is to help people to think more highly of themselves arise awake and stop not till the goal is reached was an attempt to empower people in mass the upanishads swami ji reflected from the upanishads our ancient texts inspire people and bring about a societal transformation i place before you being part of the ramakrishna movement i thought it to be appropriate to place before all of you of what our institution is doing in this regard some snippets of the ramakrishna vidyashala structure and how things happen here educational perspectives we want the education by which character is formed strength of mind is increased the intellect expanded and by which one can stand on one's own feet swami ji talks about character the moral fabric the spiritual fabric the strength of our mind that intellect and how we may be able to empower ourselves so we need to understand that proactiveness which swami ji wanted in all of us swami ji talks about true education he says true education is not the amount of information that is put into one's brain education has more to do with the assimilation of ideas and developing a mind of the same material as that of which the thunderbolt is made a thunderbolt is made. in this framework of empowerment and holistic approach to education some pointers could be explored education the six c's of education how we need to communicate clearly how we can make our communication effective how can we work collaboratively how can we delegate how can we assess then how we need to embrace multiculturalism embracing culture respect collaborating building communities how we can develop creativity to solve problems imagining incorporating design integrating function and an interdisciplinary approaches and how we can be connected we all know the power of communication and connectivity now because this contrast of how we were and how we are now gives us the value of connectivity so how we may utilize connectivity and finally thinking critically how we can assess a problem and bring about unique solutions problem solving real world problems and project based learning then we move on to the six pillars of education 
as enshrined in the Ramakrishna Vidyashala tenet. Spirituality, science, service, culture, character and concentration. That education which does not bring out the strength of character, is it worth the name? Swami Vivekananda questions us. Is it worth the name? Bertrand Russell points out, he says, unless men increase in wisdom as much as in knowledge, an increase of knowledge will be an increase of sorrow. These examples need not be hunted down, searched far. If you are aware, if you open our eyes and our mind, we can see plenty of examples, instances of these around us. So let us learn from these instances and surge forward. The Ramakrishna Vidya Shala. What I place before you are snippets, photo snippets, perspectives, which depict our students and our staff and our team in various aspects in utilizing these six pillars of education. Their retreats in the Rimse, which is a meditative workshop centers there. The Atal Tinkering Lab, which deals with the collaboration of robotic and information science workshops. The cultural excursions to circuit places and places of historical significances. The conducting of the Vidyarthi Homa, that oath taking from a student which reminds him of the ancient Gurukula system where the oaths to become a better student is taken. That service aspect where students are part in serving the community which comes to the school at regular intervals. And we have the accolades, the awards and the endowments instituted to encourage our students to perform better. And our campus, a verdant one in that, where we have our nature classes to give the student a learning which is in the bosom of nature. Swamiji says, a nation is advanced in proportion to the education and intelligence spread among the masses. What kind of education needs to be delivered is what we all need to ponder about. That education I uh, recollect a verse from one of the Subhashitams. It says, Acharya padam adatte padam shishyasvamedaya padam swabrahmacharibhya padam kalakramenacha. One fourth of knowledge is acquired from the teacher, one fourth from one's own intellect, one fourth from classmates, and the remaining quarter from experience. So how we can collaborate, how we can delegate, and how we can inspire people around us to gain the right insight to a truer education needs to be sought after. The spiritual perspective. My ideal indeed can be put into a few words. That is, to preach unto mankind their divinity and how to make it manifest it in every moment of life. Slow and silent as the gentle dew. This manifestation of the divine nature is how we can fit in, connect the dots, fit in the puzzle behind that shining light of wisdom, that light of a spiritual perspective. The fall of a country or culture is caused by its spiritual bankruptcy. In the same way, its rise depends upon spiritual awakening. Spiritual fall brings in its wake moral fall. Moral fall brings intellectual blindness and intellectual blindness brings material downfall. As I pointed out earlier, that transcendence from citizenship to an enlightened one 
incorporating the elements of equality, justice, and diversity to bring in some ideas of Dr. Radha Krishnan. The ideal man of India is not the magnanimous man of Greece or the valiant knight of medieval Europe, but the free man of spirit who has attained insight into the universal source by rigid discipline and by the practice of disinterested virtues who has freed himself from the prejudices of time and place. Citizenship, society, participation, and community. Coming on to the conclusion of my presentation, this will be the last slide, talking about enlightened citizenship. how a pathway can be traversed, how the pathway can be created, transcending from the ordinary to the enlightened. It is important to remind oneself that the very concept of citizenship presupposes that we are aware of the fact that we live in a society and everyone is intrinsically important, but the guidelines are required because humans by and large have had to prove by their conduct that they consider everyone as important as themselves. We are making a move, we are transiting. Let us strive and move forward. Strength, harmony, expansion. Swami Vivekananda's exhortation about religion. Religion is realization, not talk or doctrines or theories. However beautiful they may be, it is being and becoming, not hearing or acknowledging. It is the whole soul's becoming changed into what it believes. Direct perception of this innate divinity is at the core of spirituality. So you can understand where religion and spirituality, spirituality stands. Doctrine, dogmas, theologies and philosophies are but secondary details. Are but secondary details. I would like to, in this journey, I would like to point out, bring to your awareness the two pathways in our nature, two pathways in our struggle. One, the pravritti marga, the way we are outwardly oriented, the outward action. The nivritti marga, the inward contemplation. And this results onto the abhyudaya, the welfare, socio, politico, economic welfare, where we talk about the mutuality of concern the Parasparabhava and the Loka Sangraha, where our practical Vedanta, as envisioned by Swami Vekanda, is made applied to a bigger scale. Through all these ideas, we move on to a platform of Nishreyas. This spiritual freedom which we can achieve, we can attain by a value oriented life. That light which you're seeing there, a single light, a solitary light, to emphasize the role of each individual. When we light an earthen lamp, it does not look around to watch if any other lamp is lit, or nor does it get dismayed if no other light is burning in the vicinity. It is content to shed its little light and not worried about how much darkness needs to be removed. Is it a small privilege to be given to remove even a jot of darkness? If little things have no meaning, then they would not be there. Let us not forget the tiny atom, which is the building block of this universe. And let us not be nervous about our smallness, our smallness of our effort. Let us try. The ultimate brick of the greatest monument is but a sand particle. In Vedanta, this highest truth is equated with an individual's potential. A German philosopher, I would like to quote Arthur Schopenhauer. He says, when we strive to make society self-sufficient in our pursuit, in our extraneous pursuit, when men achieve security and welfare, now that they have solved all of the problems, 
they become a problem to themselves. Quoted from his work on the world as a will and idea. How we need to, in the pursuit of making our social system better one, how we need to focus also on ourselves so that we'll be able to receive that benefit we have put into in reforming the society to become a better place. Enlightened citizenship is every individual's responsibility. That is the spirit of the times. This is also essential teaching of Vedanta. Who are, whoever you may be, be the center of light. You are merely that, that Tvam Asi. In concluding remarks, I would like to recite a poem of Swamiji on Awaken India. Swamiji says, Swamiji was a person with great emotive strength and brilliant insight. Swamiji says, once more awake or sleep it was, not death to bring thee life. A new undress to lotus eyes for visions, daring yet the world in need awaits, O truth, no death for thee. And tell the world, awake, arise, and dream no more. Awake, arise, and dream no more. Thank you. Thank you, Swamiji, for that uh, brilliant lecture. Uh, we would like to start off with a few questions from the audience uh, uh, based on your uh, presentation. Uh, one of the uh, points which you did mention was the six pillars uh, which form the basis of the pedagogy which you use in the Ramakrishna Vidya Shala. Yes, yes. Uh, can you elaborate a bit on that? In, in a formal uh, schooling structure, how do we integrate value-based uh, education? Because that, that seems to be a hot topic which is uh, discussed across uh, schooling systems today. Mm -hmm. So, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Ramesh. You are clear. Hello. Yeah, yeah. So, the six pillars of education we're talking about spirituality, service, sciences, culture, character, and concentration. See, we are also dealing with a secular a democratic kind of a system, educative system, which is happening all across our country. To incorporate the spiritual aspect in today's society or today's world, especially in the educational framework, it is a daunting task, no doubt. But just because the task is daunting should not put you away from applying it at whatever level we can. So in Ramakrishna Vidya Shala, the routine structure of our school is designed in such a way that from the time the boy or student rises, awakens, to the time he gets back to his bed, that routine structure itself takes care of all these needs, which we call the six pillars of education. So we need not have a separate structure or a, you know, a particular place where you need to bring in this particular thing. This is one of the steadfast or sure ways to get incorporated these kind of values into our system. Now, we're asking the question of how can we do it? How we may do it? There are prototypes, there are templates. These templates need to be understood and studied because across a geophysical space, we have different requirements and different temperaments of culture and people. So we need to undertake a particular research, a study. We need to have a proactive team, which is not doing researches and documentations only, but we need to apply whatever they have. You, you, you have heard of these committees, committees after committees. We need to put it into practice. So take up a call, try to understand what we need to do and get it. And we have schools like this. We have institutions all across. This is one such school only. So there are wonderful schools who are doing human service to society. And this pillars, if you can, if you can understand a routine structure also, where morning prayers, evening prayers, the, uh, emphasis to physical activity, morning PT, the evening games, that discipline in the dining hall, 
where all of us chant the sacred verses from the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So these things, these things add a aspect of you know sacredness into that so-called secular infrastructure. So students, when they are here, because when they come back, because students have not come from the forest, they are coming from the society only. So the society which has its attractions and temptations, the distractions, whatever you may call it, this is part of their student ecosystem. And this needs to be trained and nurtured, matured, so that they'll be able to understand and appreciate these values of spiritual living. Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, that was a probably wonderful answer. Uh, Swamiji, connected to that, you were uh, mentioning about servant leadership. Um, even the education sector, you know, all the sectors that we talk about, whether health, education, or anything, we call it as actually a service industry. Correct. And Correct. E even the education sector is considered as a part of service industry. Uh, as a teacher, uh, how, how do you think we can bring in that aspect of servant leader? Now, generally, it is not seen as it is a serving a child, but how do you think we can inculcate that habit or mindset while teaching a child? Can you please elaborate on that? Yes. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. See, first, our students and our society needs to be appraised of the concepts, the deeper concept which is available. If our entire social structure, a social fabric is about money making, of how we can advance ourselves, we will not be able to appreciate that deeper fundamental truths, the tenets, which unfortunately we realize it after the ages past. So it is at this aspect where initiatives like yours, magazines, workshops, literature can bring forth Swami Vivekananda's literature, can cast broadcast these ideas to a bigger reach. And these things is something which is like growing a plant. You cannot force a plant to grow. Plant can be given that necessary nutrients. You can supply that, but the plant grows on its own. So I feel as a educationist, as a person, as a guardian here, we need to give the right facilities, make the students, the parents, and the social system aware of the pros and cons. When this Advantages and disadvantages is shown because people normally prefer the short-term benefits. People do not look forward. That is what I mentioned about the duradrishti, the duradrishtitva, the farsightedness combined with that antadrishti. When this combination is met, we'll be able to bring forth concepts, not only as servant leadership, but higher fundamental concepts of spiritual awakening, of how we can be responsive and how can we respond to a society because our service generally speaking though i would not like to make it a, a give a blanket statement i would say that our service depends upon how much tax rebates we can get our service depends on how we can bring and how our uh, our corporates can get into this thing so that there will be some other benefits we are talking about something fundamental Though this is good at a level, but the pioneers, the people who are moving it forward needs to understand and understand the essence. Once this is understood, taking a society where it is, not in a way of criticizing anybody or anything, but taking wherever it is, taking the points, culling from the society and trying to inculcate these values into that social fabric. And change comes by itself. Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, another uh, uh, challenge uh, faced by several of our teachers is uh, our world uh, seems to be undergoing some sort of, you know, uh, what we call as gamification, where mm. there is instant reward for any action. Mm. And I'm sure you would have seen the, something very similar happening with students in the Vidya Shala as well. Uh, how do we... Uh, or can you elaborate on any strategies that you have used in the Vidya Shala, which will help uh, students realize that it is not these in instant results which do matter. Uh, 
uh, while you get excited about instant <clears throat> results, but in the longer run, how consistent or how disciplined we are, th- that really matters. That's a very relevant question for today's times. Uh, you'd be observing in our current education system of how you know this uh, competitive coaching classes is uh, made a headway and uh, uh, how the existing PU structure and the different classes where people are focused into something, you know, that competitiveness which is coming into that. And from a very, very young age, uh, the students, the children are forced, thrust upon, thrust upon to get into one of the top tier, you know, Ivy League institutes or, you know, the top tier institutes. And if they do not make it there, it's like they have failed. So if this this mindset is there prevalent here. This mindset is, uh, it's, is prevalent at the social level. So unless we have these outliers, the wonderful book, you know, we have these outliers who have proven themselves, going out in the system and proven themselves and their examples need to be emulated. It's not only about engineering, being, becoming a doctor, becoming a scientist. These are noble professions indeed, but there are great NGOs initiatives by students from IIM, from IITs, starting their own NGOs and prospering and setting an example. It, uh, it, it uh, sometimes amazes the regular uh, people where they've, they've uh, given up their lucrative, you know, that uh, professional living to come down and address the needs of the society at a very, at a very, you know, at a very root level. So these things, examples need to be set. Pravachan, pravachans will be there to at one extent only. But unless people see the demonstrable, demonstrable examples, nothing much can be achieved. So we, we need people like you, IITians, doctors, the, what Dr. Balasubramam is doing around here. So we need people like them to expand their reach, expand their reach and bring about an awareness. We're talking about that inner awareness, which people see and appreciate that values can only be seen and perceived only when people see leaders around them. So we are in a death of leaders. So it is that onus of leaders to bring forth newer and better leaders. Thank you, Swamiji. And another question we had, uh, you know, initially when we planned for this uh, lecture as a, as a panel discussion, the idea was we would, uh, get uh, people from different walks of life from uh, different institutional setups or uh, different religious institutions basically to talk about why is it that uh, a christian uh, a church runs a school why do the muslim institutions run a school or why are hindu institutions running a school why is everyone investing or you know time and effort into children mm. Uh, if you recall, I pointed out a particular concept called a hilltop positioning in, in my, uh, my talk here that was intended to address this issue because uh, the, one of the initial uh, discussions you, which you had, your team had with me was the panel discussion only. Yeah. So how can that secret, that aspects of that aspects of understanding our ancient traditions and culture can have a transformative effect on the people of today. If our ancient leaders, our ancient spiritual leaders are able to bring forth that fusion of ancient, sacred with contemporary perspectives and place it before the society. There are a lot of uh, spiritual giants doing doing uh, doing human service. So this aspect needs to be understood. If this is made a reality, we'll be able to understand that we get a truer perspective. We get a we get a wider vision, so that our roles can, could be more effective. That is why religious institutions, because religious institutions have got a mystery from the time of the Catholic tradition in Rome, Italy, where 
where predominantly the educational education institutions were all run by the Catholic community. Coming on to our ancient systems, I'm talking about a very institutionalized system of uh, education in contrast with our Gurukul systems in our Vedic times, where the students used to go, uh, Samit Pani, they go and approach the teacher and learn staying in this community. The education was free. So these aspects, you know, it comes down. We have a tradition, we have a lineage, which at this particular context, how this needs to be addressed is what shape which we are seeing today. And I'm sure that we have got a long way to go to deliver that values to our people today. But we are making progress. I'm sure we will achieve that in the days to come. Uh, one of the questions uh, from Ms. Bhagyalakshmi in the audience is, uh, she uh, says that uh, the definition of character itself is misunderstood by many these days. Uh, how do you define it and how do you put, a, put it across uh, to the people here? See, uh, character means strength. Character means man-making education, which fosters something to do with nation building. Character necessarily does not translate as just being good, being goody-goody. I quote, goody-goody. See, unless I would like to uh, recall or recollect a parable by Sri Ramakrishna, where, you know, there's a there's a venomous serpent. I'd like to uh, recall that uh, anecdote placed before you. There's a venomous serpent uh, which keeps harassing the passerbys and a, a sadhu, a mahatman goes and instructs it. That's, that's how the story goes. Stories, analogies are all you know, to be taken for the message which, which it gives a delivery to the society at large. So the Mahatman goes and instructs it with a mantra and asks it, so that snake, you know, the venomous cobra, poisonous serpent, uh, you know, works on that mantra and it, try, it becomes docile. And it, you know, and people, when they see that docile nature of that snake, what do the boys do? The mischievous boys, the boys there, you know, they, they, they were able to take the snake, eat it, trash it. So the snake forgot its own nature. So after a long time, that Mahatman comes back and he inquires about this snake. And the people say, uh, no, sir, your snake is probably dead. He says, it's not possible. The initiation which I've given to it definitely fructify and it will happen, I'm sure. And he searches for that and the snake comes out. It recognizes, it's in a very, you know, very pathetic state. It comes and recognizes, yes, sir, you have instructed not to hurt anybody. So I've become... My dear student, that Mahatman says to that snake, he says, I told you not to bite, but not hiss. You can hiss, definitely you can hiss. So why you have forgotten the hiss? Let not that interpretation of goodness and character be misunderstood in that sense to become a sadhu is not something who is incapable or incompetent to handle the world. It's in spite of being competent, in spite of being good, we are able to live it up and do something which can address to the social cause. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Swamiji. Uh, 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 connected to connect question with respect to that, uh, there's a question from the audience uh, saying that the today's education is a uh, uh, kind of uh, so frustrating sometimes that uh, students do commit a uh, mistake. And there is also a question with respect to uh, success and failure that, uh, you know, uh, uh, those who uh, uh, win, they lead and those who lose uh, kind of guide kind of question. So how would you respond to that? That is one question. And uh, probably after that, you can pro give your concluding remarks as well, uh, Swamiji. See, uh, the, the social structure in our country and in countries, in advanced countries, probably, you know, at more material level, like the United States or Europe, that undue emphasis, which is given to, you know, wrote, to learn, focus on studies, gives that 
pressure it is about that pressure on that student in contrast to you know that uh, situations elsewhere where that individuality is given precedence and the students the children are allowed that freedom to pursue their interest there are positives and negatives in both we cannot give a give an underlying or under, underlying blanket statement like this is good this is not good this is beneficial this is not beneficial but a holistic picture of the positives and negatives will be taken because here in our country we are a society which is evolving and we need to do a lot on a material level so naturally it is on the onus of the parents to ensure that their kids become you know that concept from dependence to independence they want the kids to be independent so how do you expect to gain independence here without a proper foundation study foundation that is why the pressure comes so to gain that level of interdependence our social fabric needs to be more mature and evolve so this is a process as i as i pointed out unless the message like initiatives like the people like you are all doing here wonderful initiatives when this message is put across and people participate in that see there are a lot of lot of participants there are around 100 participants today so these participants are spending their time and probably some of them will be watching the video later in your uh, youtube channel later and i also i'll also be sharing it across they are giving up their valuable chunk of their evening time today is saturday so a lot of people would have lot of engagements and commitments of course this is the time of covid people may not move out but still but still they are able to part their important time to listen to these initiatives this is a good sign so this needs to be carried forward and let us not give up hope on that so with that i would like to conclude so thank you swamiji i am sure a lot of the teachers would carry back this message that uh, two things i think you highlighted very well one was it is for the schools to really look at how they would want to incorporate or come up with their own strategies of how these values can be incorporated in, uh, into their pedagogies or into their learning sy systems at the school level the second thing uh, uh, which uh, one of the audience has also messaged saying that your definition of character uh, is something which uh, students and teachers will be able to understand and uh, uh, i am sure there a lot of food for thought uh, while there is no immediate action item evolving out of this lecture i am sure when discussions happen they they will lead to uh, actions uh, thank you swami ji for this very insightful uh, and thought provoking uh, talk and i am sure we will have lots of our audience reaching out to you again with more questions and more uh, you know more of your insights into what uh, what could be done in their respective institutions uh thank you for this uh, uh, wonderful initiative i consider it a privilege to be part of this uh, setup and i hope we move forward and onward in this uh, be and make initiatives so with this i'll have the shanti mantra and then conclude is it all right yes swami ji ओम पूर्णमदः पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमाधाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांत शांत शांति हरि हि ओम तत्सत् श्री राम कृष्णार्पणमस्तु थैंक यू जय राम कृष्ण थैंक यू स्वामी जी एंड थैंक यू ऑल द ऑडियंस फॉर बीइंग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस लेक्चर next week we will have mr sahil agarwal uh, talk about uh, starting an impact uh, university he is one of the co-founders of the rishihod uh, university and the rashtram school of public leadership uh, do join in uh, next week same time and using the same login credentials thank you everyone